Hi everyone, um, I've been asked to demonstrate how to put on Sneate from a couple of people and because I don't already have a video on this I figured here's a good time to just uh, make a general one. So bear in mind that there are obviously different ways of tying up your Sneate just depending on the type of uh, Sneate you've got, um, there's different quality of Sneate you can get hold of, uh, the type of Himo, the length of the Himo. Um, and that'll also be affected by the size and shape of your own legs. So these are more just sort of general rules in putting your sine on. Uh, and a lot of it is taken from how I was taught as well. So for those of you who don't know, is a sine out there. Um, they're used to protect your lower legs from sine cuts uh, when you're doing naginata. So I'm just going to show you how you put them on over your hakama. So I'm just going to go over a few things on the Sine Ape itself. So if you have a look at it, um, the style I've got here, uh, these ones I got from Tizando several years ago, uh, they've actually got some fairly pronounced knee flaps and ankle flaps. And they're designed obviously to sit over the knee and just over the top of the ankle and the front top of the foot as protection. Um, some styles don't necessarily have that, but I find they're quite good for that little bit of extra protection in case you do get hit. Um, you've obviously got uh, a number of bamboo slats across here and they're there to take the blow from any attacks. And you'll generally have himo at the top and the bottom of the sl uh, slats as well. On some snake arte you'll find uh, a leather piece just on one side. Uh, if that's the case this is, will go on the outside of the leg. Uh, some snake arte will have leather on both sides in which case you can use it on either foot. Or leg. Uh, when you start putting on your sneate, generally you'll be facing away from the dojo floor or the shaman and you'll begin with your left leg. Now what I generally do is make sure you're kneeling up so that you can easily access the innermost pleat of your hakama and what I'll do is I'll make sure I've got that pleat nice and tight and I lay that flat down the center of my leg and I'm not sure if you can see the angle here but I try and make sure I've pulled it up high enough so it just stops above the top of my ankle. Just lower the camera a little bit more. There we go. So yes, this will just help keep the pleat tight as you get sweatier and more water gets into it you can lose the pleat if you haven't got it lined flat. So once you've got that sorted out, so all the rest of the hakama is just sort of sitting behind. Again if I've just got that loose grab that inner pleat, raise it up a little bit and line it down the center line of the front of your leg. Grab your sneate, again making sure you've got the correct sneate if it's only got one leather piece and you lay that over the top so you're basically holding the pleat in place. This obviously should be covering the top of your knee and the flap at the bottom, sorry I'll just angle it down a bit further should be sitting over the top of the ankle, just the top of the flap of the foot. From there I move my hands around and I grab the top hema. So I'm pulling back to make sure the hakama doesn't uh, loosen up. From there, just switch around, I use my fingers while I'm holding onto the top hema to just gather up my hakama at the back so it's out of the way so it's not dragging behind. Once I've got that I can pull the hema around behind it, nice and tight. I like to get it just above the top of the curve of the calf, so it's less likely to slip down. Pull it reasonably tight, but you don't want to cut off circulation. There's a few different ways you can tie it. Now the idea is generally you want to make sure the slats um, are held down. I was always taught to bring it behind the first slat on each side, and then cross over the front and over the top, so all the slats are held down and protected and then tied at the back knot and then a bow to lock it in place. Uh, if you don't have enough length uh, you may find you're doing a very small neat bow at the front and tucking the hemo in underneath the hemo here or if you're tying it at the back you just start securing the leftover ends underneath the sinet. With the bottom ones you do basically the same thing, 
try and lower that down again. So from here, I bring it behind first, underneath the slats on the outside, over the top, and then over the top again. Again, I said, if you need to, you may end up tying it at the front. If that's the case, you may find that you do not have enough length to go um, around behind and in front and cover the side slat, in which case, tie over the top of all the slats. Don't go underneath the first slat first, because you want to make sure all of them are held down and um, secured. And again, tuck the himo into either uh, behind the sene at the back or neatly under the himo at the front. And that's basically how you get your sune on. First few times you may have a trouble um, telling what is tight enough. As I said, I try and go and tie the top hemo over the um, meatiest part of the calf. So it's come in a bit like hitting the waist uh, on, your, on your leg. And that way it's less likely to be able to slide down. Uh, you will have to just get used to finding what's the uh, correct pressure. Uh, obviously if it's too tight you're going to have trouble moving and you're going to lose circulation. So just be prepared to adjust them a little bit as you get used to putting them on.